Hi, hope you're doing okay. My name is Kush and I'm a fifth year UCL medical student. In this tutorial, I'll be talking about meconium ileus and cystic fibrosis. I'll go through a quick case and then talk about cystic fibrosis and go through a short SBA. Don't worry too much about the details, just try to understand the core concepts and we'll go over them again at the end. Okay, so onto the case. You're on the neonatal ward and you're called to see a 36 hour old male newborn who's failed to pass meconium. Meconium is the first stool passed by babies after birth, usually within the first day. Uh, the baby's also been vomiting and is quite distressed, as is the mother, and the pregnancy and delivery were both uneventful and uncomplicated. On examination, the baby looks unwell with abdominal distension with doughy texture and no other abnormalities and the observations are normal. So taking this all into account, your initial impression is of some sort of bowel obstruction because of the constipation, vomiting and abdominal distension. Differentials for this in a newborn are numerous, things like Hirschsprung's disease, meconium ileus, meconium plug, bowel atresia or volvulus. And the investigations that you'd request are an abdominal x-ray and a contrast enema in order to visualize the bowel. You get them back and here on the x-ray scan, you can see dilated bowel loops uh, proximal to the blockage there on the left and on the right, a contrast enema showing an empty large bowel. This is consistent with the diagnosis of meconium ileus, which is a small bowel blockage due to the meconium. And in the 90% of cases, this is caused by cystic fibrosis. And so you do this sweat test, um, which comes back raised and confirms your diagnosis. And how do you manage this case? So nil by mouth, IV fluids and an NG tube, monitor the baby, and then you can give a contrast or saline enema in order to help pass the meconium. If that doesn't work, then you revert to surgical management which involves removal of the meconium and bowel resection if required. And complications if left untreated are volvulus, perforation and infection, or bowel atresia. Um, okay, so a bit about cystic fibrosis. What exactly is it? It's an autosomal recessive inherited condition, and it's common. Um, one in 25 are carriers. And that's important to remember because in case they ask you any genetic questions in uh, your exams. Uh, it's a mutation on the chromosome 7 on in the cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator gene, which is basically a chloride channel that transports chloride across the cell membrane. So if you're getting defective chloride movement, that means there's less water because of osmosis and the secretions are dry and thick and viscous. In the case of the pancreas and the bowel, this means that the pancreatic enzymes get stuck and the bowel's mucus is very thick. And that means the meconium in the, bowel, the baby's bowel is very thick, causes an obstruction. Um, as was the case in the meconium ileus. So this can also occur later in life, causing obstruction, and also affects the baby's liver and bile ducts, causing a prolonged ne neonatal ja jaundice, which is jaundice lasting more than two weeks in some cases in cystic fibrosis. Uh, in terms of testing, the sweat test, as I mentioned, is the gold standard diagnostic test. Um, the chloride is high in the sweat because it can't cross the cell membrane because of the defective transporter. The test works by giving pilocarpine, which stimulates sweating, and then you measure the chloride. And if it's over 60, it's diagnostic of cystic fibrosis. The Ilprick test is a screening test, uh, which is done usually on day five of life. It tests for a pancreatic enzyme, which escapes into the blood if the pancreas is blocked. And if that's raised, it's suggested for cystic fibrosis and you do a sweat test to confirm. And then there are various genetic tests that can be done, testing for the mutations. Um, for example, if a patient is a carrier and they're pregnant, you can have antenatal testing for, to see if the baby has cystic fibrosis. And you can also do genetic testing later in life for a diagnosis of cystic fibrosis. And cystic fibrosis is a multi-organ disease affecting things like the liver, the gallbladder, the lungs, the intestines, etc. And it carries a reduced life expectancy uh, because of the complications and implications for the patient, their health, their mental health, and the family and those around them. And it requires specialist uh, care with multidisciplinary input. And there are new therapies being developed all the time, some that target the protein, some that target the genes, and these are shown to improve the prognosis, and there's some that were just in trials. All right, so moving on to the single best answer question. Two-day-old neonate with failure to pass meconium, abdominal distension, and bilious vomiting. The parents are known to be cystic fibrosis carriers. You're suspecting meconium ileus. Which of the following is the best investigation, and which finding best supports the most likely diagnosis? Just have a moment. Abdominal ultrasound, target sign, abdominal x-ray and dilated bowel with fluid levels, chest x-ray and bowel loops in the left mediastinum, abdominal x-ray, and dilated bowel without fluid levels or abdominal x-ray and a double bubble sign. So you can pause the video if you want to have longer to think. It's a tricky SBA, so don't worry. 
And the answer is actually number four. So abdominal x-ray and dilated bowel without fluid levels. This is correct because obviously you have image the abdomen to look for pathology in the bowel and there's no fluid in the mucus and the meconium in the, in the cystic fibrosis is very thick and viscous. So there's no fluid level at all, uniformly thick. And remember to do a sweat test or a genetic test afterwards to confirm the diagnosis. And you can see there the x-ray on the right showing no fluid levels. All right, so that's all. These are the key take-home messages, the key things to understand from this lecture. Meconium ileus is when you get small bowel obstruction in newborns due to a blockage with a viscous meconium. Um, it presents with obstructive features like failure to pass meconium within the first day, distension of the abdomen and bilious vomiting, diagnosed on x-ray, and you can do an enema, which may treat it. If not, you need surgery. Meconium ileus is a classic presentation of cystic fibrosis in newborns, so you should always be thinking of it in that case, and remember that the heel prick test is a screening test for cystic fibrosis. And the diagnostic gold standard test is sweat test, looking for a high chloride. And once diagnosed, it's a chronic um, multi-system um, disease requiring long-term specialist care and management as well with a multidisciplinary approach. That's all from me. Thanks very much for your time and thanks for listening. I hope it was useful. Uh, here's some resources that might, might find helpful for revision. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to email me. Thanks very much for your time and that's all. Take care.